What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Doing something a little different today. I got my Monster Bass box. Actually, I've had it for a while, a little late on uh, giving you guys some information on this. I'm not just going to do a regular unboxing, right? You can go to the Monster Bass channel. Rick does that. The cool thing that I thought about this one is it's some interesting lures, things that I use. And I thought, you know what? It'd be kind of fun to go back in history and talk about the things that I used to use, the things that it compared to, kind of the types of lures that I started with this with for some of these. So we're going to do kind of a now versus then lures thing unboxing deal. Come Where on. shall we start? Okay, first off, you always get the booklet. And I think this is really one of the coolest parts. Trying to help people learn how to use these lures, when, where, why, all that good stuff. I really like that Monster Bass puts that together. Now, the lures, this is what we care about. Hooks, okay, I'm not going to get anything special about the hooks. I used to use a number of hooks back in the day. I think Dad was a Gamagatsu guy, so I probably used lots of gammies. But these, I did take them out and check them. They are nice and sharp. As long as your hooks are solid and sharp, then use what you like. Okay, as far as buzz baits go now, I remember back in the day I had a buzz bait that was from Booyah that I absolutely loved. Couldn't tell you the name of it. This one is from Razor Custom Tackle, the prop knocker. I like it. It's a 3 8 ounce. 3 8 or half ounce is what I usually throw from the bank unless I want something a little more finesse. And you can see it bangs on the head there. So as this is going through the water, it's knocking on the, uh, the wire there, knocking on the head giving it a little extra sound. White and chartreuse I absolutely love around here. This one does not have a, a soft plastic keeper. So anyway, for me back in the day, that Booyah one was absolutely excellent. But the second one that I go to that I do have, now this is a new one, this isn't one of my old, old ones, but a War Eagle. And again, talking about this, this is a little quarter ounce, a quarter ounce War Eagle buzz bait uh, or three eighths ounce bank fishing has been absolutely money for me in the past. Same thing with this one. The only thing about these is they don't have a soft plastic keeper. So if you like to run something under the skirt, might want something different. But what I like about the War Eagle is they'd have the two different length skirts. So you got this little short one and the second one back here. And as you pop this and kind of give your buzz bait a little bit of chug, this looks like a tail. This acts like the soft plastic for you because on buzz baits, I'm not using something big, crazy, unless I'm going with like a naked buzz bait where I take off the skirt. That's kind of a different deal. So for me back in the day, either that old Booyah or a War Eagle like this. And I like how the hooks kind of canted up. So you're running through the water like this, the hook's nice and straight, super sharp, good hooks on it. Uh, War Eagle makes a really good little buzz bait. So if you're looking for one, I would uh, advise that. This was definitely one that I kind of cut my teeth on back in the day for buzz baits. All right, next up we've got a frog. Now I think there's a couple of these in here. Now when it comes to frogs, this specific type, a hollow body with kicking feet. I really used two back in the day, but I would probably say the first one that really got me excited was this Teckle Sprinker. Now this frog is from uh, Buzz Frog. Who makes it? Blitz Lures. Looks like a pretty solid little frog. Take it out. Well, that's not good. I pulled the frog out of the package and the legs are like separated from the body. Not a good deal. Uh, I will definitely have to contact them on that and let them know in case anybody else had this issue. Uh, but the frog itself looks really good. So you can see it's a good soft plastic. Hooks are nice and sharp, but um, that is useless now. So I'll have to uh, talk to them on that. That's not good. So the two that kind of come to me uh, in the past that I used would have been the old Teckle Sprinker. So this is one that I thought was a gimmick. Dumb as heck. You can see this thing's been ripped to shreds by Pike. Use the heck out of it. But it's this simple little hollow, plas hollow body frog with a little tail on back that spins. So as you bring it through the water, you just cast out and retrieve it. This tail's going pop, 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 in the back ton of bass. I've caught a ton of pike on this thing. It's a fun little lure because you can just cast it out and cover water. I know a lot of people are like, how do I work a frog? How do I make it kick back and forth? Do I walk it? Do I pop it? With this, you cast out, reel it in. That's all there is to it. Awesome little bait. Um, good hookup ratio on it. Good solid hooks, sharp hooks. Really like that one. Now, when it comes to the frogs that are similar to this, like the kicky foot plastics, um, probably the biggest one that I've liked out of all of them is this one. It's the culprit and creta frog. Randy and I joke around that this frog's never skipped leg days. You can see he's got quads for days there. Um, you can run it with like a little double frog hook. Here I just happen to have a little light weighted belly hook on it. And it does sink. So that's kind of the opposite, uh, the thing that you want these for or don't like it for. These float, obviously. You stop it, it floats there. But these are nice because if you get into holes in the grass or on the edges of grass, you can kill it and it just kind of glides down. So that is something to think about with these. They're not going to float there on the top of the water, especially if you add a little weight to the belly. And this just ensures that as you cast, the belly runs down and it doesn't accidentally flip over and run hook down and grab a bunch of stuff. That happens to me when I run a, uh, a weightless hook on there. But if we're going way back in the day, the very first frog that I remember, I would say that they're probably the pioneers of this for as far as I can remember. And there may be been a different you know company or a small company that did this. But man, back in the day, 
I don't remember seeing anything else besides a Zoom Horny Toad. That's what these are. If you've never seen one, these for me kind of paved the way. And these are great on the back of a buzz bait. So if you want to take the skirt off and it's got a soft plastic keeper, put a little frog on there like that. I don't like to run it with the, the skirt. Take that off and run a frog just like that. I call it a naked buzz bait. And that is awesome for getting bites in the summer, especially when those fish are keen in on frogs. The Zoom Horny Toad for me was probably the first one that I ever used like this and is still one that I have in my arsenal today. All right, next in the box, we've got a popper. Now you'll notice, what the heck, I didn't get a popper. No, I got it, but I already took this out and used it. This is from ARC, the TP70. Two and three quarters inches, weighs three eighths of an ounce. And it's out because this is actually the lure that I used the other day to catch uh, a bunch of bass. All of my morning bass came on this. Speaking of bass, this is in their baby bass color. Really good looking color on it. It's a little bit longer uh, popper. It walked really well. I noticed that with the ones that have a little bit more of, you know, that kind of pencil popper look walks really well and it had a very good distinct and kind of unique uh chug to it so when you pop it slow it down and go bloop, and get that big bubble that comes out of a popper you know that people always really look for this one did awesome so uh you're gonna see a video of me fishing this through the morning catching some really good fish on it on this little arc popper now this is kind of the cool thing about the box because this is a lure that i never would have picked up i had uh, an issue with some arc rods in the past but they make baits now. I never really picked up a bait because I was like, eh, I don't, I don't know that I really need any. But this one, it comes with the feather treble. Hooks are really super sharp on it. The only thing that I didn't like is it didn't come with a split ring. I know you could tie a loop knot. I'm personally not a fan of loop knot. So I went with a little spro clip on it uh, and it worked absolutely great. Gave it enough motion. Uh, and I do prefer to run straight mono on my poppers and walking baits. That way as you're walking it, that line's a little bit more rigid and doesn't tend to get caught in the hooks um, like a maybe a 30 pound braid would. So that's the, uh, the setup for me. Now for the old school, it's gotta be the old Rebel Pop R. There's a reason why so many people call any type of popping bait a Pop R. This was it. Now, uh, I don't have, I've got a couple of my old ones. I couldn't find them, but the old Rebel, I think it was the P, was it the P70? The smaller uh, Pop R, that silver black back or the baby bass were the popper that I turned to. Dad loved them. I fished them. Also the little head and Zara spook puppy, but that's a different story. The Rebel Pop R. Now a few years ago, a couple years back, I think they came out with the P71. The difference with this one is it's a little bit bigger. So you can see the head of this compared to this one. Larger size, little bit larger profile, still walks really well. This one kicks side to side good. And you can see kind of that upper lip is cupped kind of out. And this spits water really well, has a good chug to it. Um, really have liked this P71 a lot. This is one you saw in a video a couple times. You can see it has been tied on. Um, saw this in the video a couple times. Actually, subscribe, fish and friend. Saved this for me. I got it stuck in a tree, broke it off in the bank. He went over in his boat and got it for me and uh, traded me. But I, I appreciate the heck out of that. But this is a really, really good one if you're looking to get it. I think this one's Bleeding Shad. This is a new one. Haven't used this yet, but just your all white bones. So something like that, reflective or a, you know, a white kind of shad color. I've really, really liked this one from Rebel, the P71. Okay, sticking with the frog theme, I kind of already went over these. I will show you this one because it is neat. This is the Vicious Frog. Now the same for those frogs I was showing you, the culprit or like a horny toad. This is just a soft plastic you can rig up on a hook. I suppose this one you could put on a buzz bait, but I like this kind of slimmer profile. And yes, this is an old swim jig. Talk about an old secret. Um, using these old horny toads as a swim jig trailer works awesome. Sits nice and flat, comes over logs and wood well, doesn't uh, roll over and get snagged. So that's a free tip for you. You can see this one's been beat to heck. This is a Strike King eyes roll off of it. But you know, that skinnier profile on a buzz, but you can see there it fits between these legs. That's how compact it is. This one I would run on a hook as its own top water, just a regular toad. It's got good big feet there. Kind of reminds me of the ribbit toads if you've ever fished those. Good solid body. I bet it's going to have a good hook, uh, kick to it. I've never used these, but I do like the look of it from uh, Vicious. This is a good looking natural watermelon red. Okay, since we're talking about the soft plastics here, I was excited to see these. I know, I'm kind of a nerd, but Big Bite Baits came out with these. Kamikaze Swim On Split Tail. This is the Pearl, 4.25 inches. And the reason I was excited because back in the day, dad and I would use a split tail trailer like this on all of our spinner baits. That's just what we threw. This one kind of excited me because it's segmented there. You can see it's gonna kick side to side really well. Would work good on a buzz bait if you wanted kind of a, a smaller natural profile on the back of a chatter bait or a spinner bait. Something like this where it doesn't have a bunch of kick. It's not interrupting the action, you know, motion, movement of the lure itself. It's just kind of back there, giving it a little bit of bulk, giving it a kind of a different look. 
Um, these back in the day, I think Z-Man actually used to come, the originals used to come with their own Z-Man Elastec split tail. But for me, back in the day, I think it was Zoom that used to make these. These are the old ones. These are from my old tackle box. This is it. This is what we used to throw uh, on our spinner baits. Some of them used to have, oh, there we go. Some of them used to have like a red uh, dip on it, I remember. This is it. This is just a simple U-tail. Added a little bulk to it. When you would pop your spinner bait, it would kind of give that look in the back. Um, these are absolutely awesome. So big bites. Glad they put these back on. Spinner bait or a chatter bait trailer will work awesome. Okay, we've got a couple more left in here. We've got a jerk bait. This is from Bruiser Baits. I believe I've got one of these in a Monster Bass box before, and I liked it. I did, however, get it hung up on a brush pile and lost it. This is a floating 110 size, half ounce, pretty standard when it comes to a lot of the jerk baits. It's kind of that, you know, that Mega Bass 110 kind of look to it. Um, but it's a floating, and for bank anglers, you can see here, doesn't dive very deep. Maybe I'm going to guess five feet at most. Um, but with a floating jerk bait like this, it's great work on the outsides of grass edges. If the grass is deep enough, where it's just coming up to maybe three foot, you can work this over it, and as soon as you start to hit the grass, let it float up, and you'll get bites like that. I've done that. There's been videos a couple years ago, and last year I did that with uh, some of my own painted jerk baits. This is a great way to attack grass. I know my man Philip Cheek uh, is a huge jerk bait guy, and he could probably give some tips down below. I'll have to get him on a live sometime. Uh, but the jerk bait like this, a floating jerk bait, is kind of something that's been forgotten. And when I talk about this, the first thing that has to come to mind for me is an old Rapala jerk bait. Now we had these in uh, the Rapala minnows, the floating version. This is a suspending version. This is one that's been beat to heck. Um, but Dad and I used to fish these all the time. In fact. It was, I think, the little three inch of the one a little bit smaller than this. That's what dad caught his PB on, nine pounds something. And that was on an old junky scale. So there's a great chance that it could have been uh, close to a double digit back in the day. But they had it when they were trolling by some um, brush, weighted kind of like a Carolina rig, weighted in the front so it would keep it down and then bring it by that brush that was down there at that exact level. So you didn't have to worry about working it and letting it float, doing all that. It would get to that point and just stay here so it would work and then just kind of float there in the water with it and that's how he caught his pb bass so these are great you know back then i'm sure you've remember these in your dad and grandpa's tackle boxes the rapala minnows or a floating minnow a suspending this is actually the husky jerk to be exact but this style of jerk bait uh, is what i used for a long long time before i really started to venture out so don't write these off don't write you know the the floating jerk baits out i think people just think jerk baits it has to be suspending it's either going to be fall or spring but you can definitely use these in different ways you know around the grass in front of the grass um actually when i went on my monster bass trip last year i was using their was it the slick stick or whatever their version of it uh, and caught a bunch of good bass on the outside the grass and pads ton of fun so if you've not thrown a jerk bait in a while uh, it doesn't have to be just spring or fall don't be afraid to get it out now even in the summer catch some fish okay i'm gonna say i saved the worst for last now i've never fished it so take this with a grain of salt i'm not saying the lure stinks however i think it's going to be hard for me to find a time and place to use this the dart prop pro sinking i don't even know what to say about this thing it's interesting uh, i will say that so you've got the two propellers on it you can see they're kind of like the rapala is it the skitter prop i think they call it uh, it's got a kind of a large hook inside of it there you can see so, you know, I would fish something like this, a, a Beast Coast Miyagi. Um, there's been other swim baits that I would use a larger hook like this and fish it around grass. However, the issue with this is it's got these propellers that if you start to get grass stuck in there, I mean, that's going to completely kill the action of this. Is it interesting? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how the heck you fish, does it say? Fish it on the surface with a medium to fast retrieve or down to 10 feet after letting it sink, then use a super slow retrieve. Perfect in both open water or medium cover. Shines when used in lily pads, submerged trees, and brush. I'll be honest, this thing has a lot of stuff going on with it, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, I've never fished it. I've never fished a bait like this. Uh, maybe we'll need to get this out and kind of do a challenge to see. Can we catch something on this? I don't know. Very unique looking. Uh, definitely one that I can't really compare to back in the day. Uh, I've never fished anything like this. All right, fishing friends, do me a favor, comment below and let me know what you thought of the box. Is it one you would pick up? Um, for the most part, I really liked everything that came in there. The last one, I don't know about it. Like I said, I've never fished it. Uh, it's a little bit different. And the frog, I'll have to let them know about the frog that stinks that mine came broke. Um, if you did get one like that, definitely reached out to Monster Bass. Uh, those guys will 
fix you up. I guarantee it. Um, good folks over there. I like that they're trying to help people learn how to fish. It's not just, you know, throwing a box out there, trying to make lures, you know, for the time of year, trying to help people learn how to fish that I think is cool. And I think it's neat that they're putting lures in that even I used to use back in the day like I showed you here. So comment below and let me know if you like this type of video, kind of the comparisons, looking at some old lures. Um, and also if you comment below, this is only for the OG good folks that stay till the very end, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. So in a couple weeks, I will pin a random comment. Um, if I pick you, you'll get the box of stuff. Probably not the Arc Topwater. I might have to keep that for myself. So I might throw in one of these uh, P71s so you can try it because it's kind of a cool new one too. But that's enough for me today. Subscribe, Fish and Friend. We haven't done one for a while. Today's subscribe fish and friend is Jesse G was just looking at my uh, YouTube comments and he is somebody that commented recently. I appreciate the heck of everybody that continues to watch and comment helps me helps the channel. Um, again, I would not be here without all of you. And that's something that every YouTuber kind of needs to remember is all of you are what make up, uh, you know, the success of somebody doing this, the channel growing and watching. So was it for you all? I would not be here, but that's enough for me. I need to get things edited. Thanks for watching. And until next time. Yeah.